thank you for clicking on the video this is a review for stranger things i'm gonna try to we're gonna try to talk about seasons one through four because we got four seasons to talk about and um we we certainly i wasn't gonna do four separate um videos to talk about each season or nothing like that i probably could have reviewed it from the beginning we're just going to review it now um, briefly because it's brought me to chorus. Stranger Things is one of those like cult following type of shows. Like It has a huge fan base. A lot of people love the show. It's on Netflix if you're not aware. Um, like I said, there are four seasons. I went back and watched all four seasons again after fin after finishing the the last two episodes in season four it just made me want to just watch it again and i was just like i just can't get out of hawkins <laughs> that happens to me when i watch um or when i binge watch any series i'm just kind i'm kind of like stuck there in my head just stuck I'm, i i be feeling like i'm one of the cast members and everything like i have been on a journey and my mind ain't ready to come off the journey um so my favorite season um, is season four. This 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 latest season was it was icing on the cake for me. It was really good. It was really good. The way that you know everything has been um, wrapped up as far as the storyline goes and what's been going on and how this happened and how that happened and you know and rewatching it also kind of solidified that for me and how the storyline has progressed and how it's all intertwined and everything comes together. Love it. Love it. Um, it really all makes sense now. <laughs> it really all makes sense. Um, I, like I said, I watched, I went back and watched season one through, I actually didn't watch season four again, but cause I had like just finished it. So it really would have been redundant to watch it again but I definitely went back and watched seasons one through three and I was on another it was listen it was a trip it was a trip um my least favorite season is season two I didn't like the this this journey we went on with 11 as far as her leaving Hopper and going to go find her mama and then she found her mama and when she was staying with her auntie and then her auntie was going to try to turn her in and those things so she had to leave there and then she was with her sister and her sister had her out there being a goth <laughs> she out there murdering people you know they were her sister started using her gift you know to go and locate um people that have wronged them or had, who they deemed to be um worthy of death and so I didn't really care for that season too much. I didn't want to go on that journey with Eleven here, there, and everywhere when she should have been in Hawkins helping them. <laughs> it's, it's all this going on. All this is happening. And you are with your sister doing dirt, you know. And, of course, she realizes and um, ends up coming back. And she, of course, is there right on time to save the day per usual, but season two kind of felt like a filler it kind of felt like let's fill in some space here i don't know and um there's some I've, i think i read um i don't know if it was a blog or was it you somebody on youtube i don't know but i think that her sister will be returning for season five i don't know what role she'll have but she'll be returning for season five so we'll see if we get to see her again um, let's talk about these characters. Um, I do. I, I've loved every additional character that that we have gotten because, of course, we start out in season one with Will Byers, Mike, Dustin, and Lucas. It's the four of them, and you know they have their Dungeons and Dragons Dragons Club, and they're you know the little nerds. We don't meet. Any siblings or well, we meet Mike's siblings, of course. His um his brother and his sister. Um I mean not his brother. His sister Nancy and we meet Will's brother, Jonathan. But Lucas has a little sister and we don't meet her until season two. Yeah, we don't meet her until season two. And I love Erica. She is one of my favorite characters, her and Dustin. Erica is a little spitfire. She is 
very, <laughs> very, 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 well, I should say wise beyond her years. That girl's mouth is something else. I love Erica and I love how her character has grown over the years. Um, <laughs> she's going to be something else by season five. And these people are really grown now. Thinking about, well, looking back, especially watching it over again, this, this started in 2016 and they were kids. Like they were, I don't, elementary aged. I think they were supposed to be in middle school. Well, they were in middle school and on the show, maybe like sixth or seventh grade, but they were so little and tiny. And now they're full grown adults. Well, not adults, but you know, like big teenagers, 17, 18 years old. It's amazing <laughs> how, you know, people grow before our eyes on this television screen. But anyway, um, like I was saying, Erica and Dustin are my favorite two characters. Dustin is the friend that you need. He's a great friend to all of them. Um, oh, I got sidetracked. This is how my mind does, bouncing around like this. <laughs> um, but I was talking about the the different characters and the additional characters that we got. We got Erica in season two. We got, um, I don't forgot the girl name just that fast. Uma Thurman's daughter. I think she, I think she came in season three when, um, when the boys started working at the ice cream shop and I don't know why I'm forgetting his name too right now. I don't know why I'm forgetting his name. He, that was Nancy's whole man, Steve, <laughs> Steve, or is it Scott? It's Steve, right? Steve. Steve was an additional character. No, Steve was from the beginning. Steve and Nancy were dating or whatever. Um, Steve, of course, at first was a character that was an antagonist. Um, I didn't really see it for Steve like that because of the way he treated Jonathan. He kind of bullied him a little bit and he was one of those, you know, trying to keep up with the with the cool kids, you know, knowing he ain't really like that in real life, knowing that he don't have the heart to be out here bullying people and being mean to people. Um, he's just jealous that Nancy, you know, took a liking to, to another boy. Um, so, of course, we have that love story aspect of it all. We always have to do that. Sometimes I, I watch these Netflix series and it's like, are these teenagers, these kids, really dealing in they real, <laughs> in, the, in these relationship issues like they grown? Um, but we, ha we have to do that. We have to have that that a part of the storyline but um erica was a was a great addition uma thurman's daughter was a great addition um max we got max in season two i love max i've I, i've liked max's character from day one she is a girl's girl although you know her she became she befriended this this group of boys Seeing Eleven come into the picture, she was excited about that. And then here come Eleven. <laughs> Getting jealous and thinking that Max, you know, was in the... Because like I said, Eleven was gone. She was out of the picture. And when she finally does come back into the picture, she thinks that Mike's, Mike has moved on with Max. Not so. You know, Max is Lucas's girl. <laughs> um, I also didn't like that Lucas and, and Dustin, um, I, 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 well, I should say I love the fact that Lucas and Dustin were able to remain friends even though they both liked the same girl. They both liked Max. And it wasn't a I'm going to step on your toes type of situation when Dustin realized that, you know, it was no point in fighting anymore or I should say there was no point in um, trying to make any more advances. It was obvious that she had making her choice. <laughs> he moved on. You know, he went and got his little girlfriend um, at summer camp. Um, okay, I'm going to move on from the characters because there's so many different different characters that have been added, that, ha that we have lost, all of that. Because like I said, this is four seasons. My least favorite character, though, is Mike. He's an asshole. I don't know. I just don't like Mike. <laughs> I liked him in season one. And then in season two, he really got on my nerves. He just really thinks he's in charge of everything. And like, he's the leader of the pact and everybody has to listen to him and everything has to go through him. And 
He only cares about what he wants and he only cares about 11. It's like my friends, <laughs> fuck the bro code or, you know, the law, with all of that. He just, Mike is something else. And I guess he's just being a typical teenager, but he's my least favorite character. I, I, I just, I can, I can do without Mike. <laughs> I wish Will gave us more, especially in season four. Or all the seasons. You know, we started out, this all started out because of him. You know, we looking for him in season one. Where is Will Byers? The disappearance of Will Byers. And his character is just kind of lackluster, you know? I don't know. Maybe in the last season, because we started with him, we'll end with him. And, and maybe his, his character will have a lot more um, development coming you know because it's coming to a close i don't know but like i said i don't like mike <laughs> um i do like that this is a very you know like a coming of age type of situation it's very nostalgic that's for sure it, it, it makes you feel like you're a kid again when you're watching it it's just very nostalgic growing up because well i didn't grow up in the 80s <laughs> absolutely not like I, I was born on the tail end of the 80s 88 so I grew up in the 90s um and I feel like my childhood sort of mir mirrored theirs in a lot of ways um especially with the fact that you know we didn't have the technology and all of that then you know it was it was new wasn't as advanced as it, as it is now I mean at the at the most you, you had a tv <laughs> you know a vcr um you know, a radio player, a, a boombox type of situation. Um, and yeah, that was the entertainment for the house. We didn't have a computer for a long... We, when the computers first, you know, came out, them big-ass computers, we didn't have one. We was going to the library to do the research. <laughs> going and you, We were using encyclopedias. I'm really getting off, off topic, but saying all that to say, it's very nostalgic seeing, you know, my childhood, you know, playing out like that. Um, Will and, and his sexuality. I think that they've been alluding to Will's sexuality since season two. Since season two. Because when Eleven came around, he had to kind of fight for that attention. Um... What fight for Mike's attention? Mike is his best friend, and um, he they you know they they're close. And when Eleven came into the picture, it's kind of like he kind of fell by the wayside. And I thought that Will you know just wanted his friends back. I thought that this was just about you know he and his friends and 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 excuse me and the fact that they were growing up. And so of course they're gonna like girls. Of course you know. And I thought that Will, the fact that he was missing for that entire season in the first season, maybe he, you know, his growth had stunned it a little bit. You know, he he's not there yet. Um, but the seasons progressed, and it's starting to it's starting to feel like Will may be gay, and they're not gonna just outright and say that they haven't. And it's crazy that they won't do that. But Uma Thurman's daughter is gay. And she's and they they she's said that like vocalized <laughs> that on um on her first no not her first season on the show because she came in season three in in season four in season four she um she meant she talks about you know her feelings for one of the girls in the band and so that's an obvious you know coming out situation you know she came out to um. Steve and and Steve was all in love with her you know so we got that and that was pretty cut and dry but Will and his sexuality is very we're being very evasive about it and I don't know why <laughs> I don't know why we're doing that I don't know if it's because the writers just wanted to be that way or they didn't feel like we needed to explore Will's sexuality but if you're gonna if, if we're gonna keep alluding to it then y'all might as well just say that shit or I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they're saying we have said it. <laughs> we have said it because there was a time when Mike said to Will 
that, um, you know, they were having a little spat. And he said, it's not my fault that you don't like girls. And I was thinking, even at that time, well, maybe, again, maybe he's just not there yet. Because not, everybody ain't developing the same, you know. He might still be one of them little boys that still want to play with action figures. That's still, that's still a guy's guys, you know, a boy's boy that wants to hang out with the rest of his friends and play video games and play D&D. And, you know, really, he's he, he got his bromance going. <laughs> And no, I think that Will was in love or is in love with Mike. And the thought of, you know, losing Mike if he vocalizes that, I don't know. Because he's, it's not like nothing is nothing's going to ever, it's not like something's going to ever come of it because it's, I, Mike is in a whole situation with, with Eleven. He's heterosexual. So there's no exploring that. Um I don't know, y'all. I don't know. I th the writers are, are not going to <laughs> blatantly put that out there, but that's been a topic swirling around. Um, and so I just decided I would speak on it a little bit. I just, I too feel that same way that Will is gay. Um, that whole breakdown in that car, talking about, you know, the love he has for his friends and I, it just was given, I, I'm in love with my best friend and he, he don't love me like that. You know, he loves Eleven in that way, not me. And, and, the, and him coming to that realization is what broke him down in that car. <sighs> I was crying too, Will. <laughs> I was crying too. This, this show will bring out all the emotions. It really will. It bring out the anger, laughter. You're going to be crying. It's a great show. It's just really a great show. Okay, um, Max. So, in this latest season, in season four, Max, in the end, sorry, spoiler alert. <laughs> Max, we think, dies. You know, she is captured by Vecna and... He takes her through that whole thing, you know, breaking all of her limbs and all of that and took her eyesight, all that she was blind, all of that. And we saw her die. And Eleven revived her. And um, now she's in a coma. And I don't know if that's the end for her character, like if that's where we're going to end with Max or... If in season five, she's going to wake up from this coma somehow. Um, Eleven did look into her memories and all of that and found none. Her 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 mind is blank completely. So I hope I hope she's really not brain dead. You know, like that. I mean, no activity. That's what that means. But don't bring her back just to put her in a coma and have me feeling like is she going to make it or not. I was so upset with that. I love Max. I really do. So just if, if she was going to be gone, can she just be gone and not, okay, now she's back. There's hope. But she in a whole coma with no brain activity. That That's, that's very bleak. <laughs> it's not looking like in season five it's going to be looking good for Max. It doesn't look good for Max at all. Um, and that's unfortunate. I was mad about that. It was just like, why not somebody else? Like it was so many other people that Vecna could have took. And we took Max. The writers say that Max was supposed to be gone after that. They they did write that in that that was going to be the, it, the, the end for her. But I think last minute they switched it up. And that's why she in a coma. That's very, that seems very last minute. But okay, is she going to wake up? Is my is that's my next question? Is she gonna wake up from this in season five? And I do hope so because Max got to be. Listen, we can't we can't lose nobody in the crew. <laughs> we cannot lose anybody in the crew. Um, speaking of the 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 people that we've lost, I feel like okay, Bob in season one he deserved better. Bob, or was Bob in season two? No, no. Bob was season Bob was in season two. Bob was in season two because that was Joyce Byers' man. <laughs> um and, and he helped save the world too, but we lost him in season two. And I just said, why? <laughs> like he could have I guess I guess the the way they they have things written 
if if Bob was around, then there would be no Hopper and Joyce. And so we got to have Hopper and Joyce. So sorry, Bob. <laughs> Collateral damage. Sorry. Um, and Eddie. Eddie was in this season. Eddie was his his character was great. He's a these people are brilliant actors, by the way. They're all super talented, super duper duper talented. And that Eddie is great. Eddie is great. Um, I loved Eddie's character too from from the beginning. You know, they they tried to paint him like he was some devil worshiping, um, you know, thug, but not. Not like that at all. He's still out here playing D and D with the kids. <laughs> you know, he's a role model for the children, and overall, just a good guy. Just a good guy, like like a Robin Hood, if you will. You know, um, I loved Eddie's character, and I was very sad to see him go. Um, I wish that he would have been able to go into season five, but. We lost Eddie. Eddie was a real one. He was a real one. He was Dustin's bestie, and Dustin gave us the an an Emmy worthy performance. Um, in the in the moment where you know his friend was dying, and he you know it it was all it was all it was it was a lot. It was a lot. The season four, of course, left me mourning. I feel like. They all t all the time they be leaving me in mourning, but this this one, the season four, really left me in mourning. I was I was really told up about Eddie, um, dying and Max being left in a coma. All of that just had me told up. It really did. Um. So, when it comes to the characters that have that died, Papa died as well in season four, and I want to know if he's dead or will he be back. Because he has died and come back before. I, I feel like they showed us him blow up or something like that or something. He 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 was supposedly gone um, in, in the first season. And here we are in the fourth season and he back. <laughs> He's still around. So, I don't know. I don't know. Um... We saw him take his last breath, but you know, with stranger things, stranger things have happened. And so it it's not far fetched for him to be back again. <laughs> Just like Hopper. We saw Hopper blow up, or at least we thought. And then here he is in Russia. So it's 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 safe to say Papa may be back as well in season five. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if there's any if there's any more point to him being a part of this because that whole trying to capture Eleven and get her back to, um, you know, work on to, you know, st st stick and pull, poke at her some more um, for science purposes. I feel like that's done. Um, so I don't even know where we're going to go with this for season five. Is Vecna still? I, now I feel like I do need to watch season four again because I'm forgetting details. I'm forgetting. I'm forgetting these cliffhanger details. Um, yeah, I ain't gonna try to figure it out right now because that's rambling and we're not here to ramble. <laughs> um, overall, I enjoy the series. I'm going to be sad to see it go. Um, I mean, I guess the writers, they, they got to do other things and work on other things, but it's just like, where are the days when, when we could get 20 seasons out of people. The only somebody giving us 20, 20 something seasons is law and order SVU. They are in their like 24th season. Now that is longevity. That is working hard. Dick Wolf ain't playing. <laughs> he ain't playing. He is going to pump them out. He's going to pump as long as shit is happening out here in these streets and in the media and all of that. He gonna have a story to tell over on the Law and Order SVU, and I just I just feel like Stranger Things could have went to ten seasons. We could have had at least eight seasons, you know, seven completion, you know. God damn, they just be cutting it off at four seasons and two seasons and one. I just, especially the good ones. The good ones always end. The, the good ones always come to an end. And it really bothers me because I want to continue to watch Stranger Things forever. <laughs>
<laughs> I want to watch it forever. I don't want to just be done after five seasons. I wanted them to at least give me seven. I wanted them to give me seven or ten seasons of Underground. I wanted them to give me seven, ten seasons of um, Lovecraft Country. Now, that one for sure broke me down when, when I found out that we weren't going to get another one. <sighs> anyway, I ain't here for that. <laughs> I, was, I was over here to talk about Stranger Things. Y'all go over there on the Netflix and watch it if you have not. Um, hopefully I gave you enough of background information so that, you know, you can assess for yourself whether or not it's something you want to look at, but it's very sci-fi. Um, it's a thriller, if you will. We got, like I said, we got everything, comedy, thriller, sci-fi, <laughs> drama, you know, all that. It's good. It's a great show. Stranger Things on Netflix, okay? The Duffer Brothers, they did that. Be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. It's Call Me Busby, and I'll chat with you later. Peace and light.